Jackson Howard. When you talk about Cooper, this is the kid you think of. 60 Division I college football offers chose LSU this summer to go play, but tonight he starts his senior year, and quite honestly, it was his teammates who made a big splash tonight as well. Let's go to the game. Tackle Cancer Night at Orono High School, where they're raising money for cancer awareness and cancer research through the Randy Shaver Cancer Research and Community Fund. How about Charlie Kraus to Brady McPherson? Touchdown strike here. Orono gets on the board first, 7 nothing. Second quarter, Chance Wicks to Dalen Gurley. This is a 21-yard gain as Cooper on the move. And here we go. A few plays later, Wicks to Kayvon Cager. He spins his way to a touchdown. 42 yards. Orono leads 7-6 at halftime. Third quarter. Liam Rogers spins around. Breaks free. 43 yards on this gain into Cooper territory. It would set up Kraus to George Perkins. Touchdown strike to make it 14-6. Orono in front. Denari Connors gets loose and he will not be caught. Ooh, this is a good football game, as expected. Denari Connors comes right back. 12-yard score for Cooper. Now they're down in this game. Cooper going for two. Cameron Fox in a QB, stopped right at the goal line by Nash Tickey. Two-point conversion, no good, 14-12. Connors, nifty, 19-yard gain, down to the 14. Connors then would finish the drive. 14-yard score. Look at that move. Their 14 yard game still going. There he goes. That's incredible. Last year in the playoffs, maybe not this season. Charlie Kraus to Nash Kishi. Keeps his feet in and he's gone. Orno finds a way in a good one. 21 to 18. 18 14. But Kraus to Tiki. And how is he so open? 56 yards down the sidelines. Orno goes up 21-18, and then Victor Ruland with a huge interception. Wow, what a spotlight game on our opening Friday night. Orono knocks off the number five team in 5A, 21-18 the final. We knew it was going to be a tough game. You're in, you're out, they're always good. So basically, we just knew the trenches. We got to control the trenches, and you know that's 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 how we're going to win the game. So and that's what we did. My offensive line set me up perfectly, and I know I know we had three passing touchdowns, but the running in the offensive line really set that up. Everyone played great. I mean, we we knew we could beat them. You know, we played them tough last year. Watching film, we just made mistakes. We corrected them this year. It was awesome. Everyone played. Everyone played so well. It, it was it was great. Man. Well, with our running game, we just tried to pound the ball, and um, you know we were able to do that a little bit tonight. You know, we want to control the game, so it, it worked out tonight for us a perfect night to open the football season Fridley got on the board first a pick six from Karome Thompson after the conversion they led eight nothing that score held for almost the length of the contest tonight Karome Thompson 62 yards on this tipped pick six and the Fridley Tigers with a two-point conversion would take the lead eight to nothing Landon Dillon a nice 35-yard power run here for SMB, but the Wolfpack scored a couple of times late. Fridley would rally to win. Final score was 15-14. Thanks largely to five forced turnovers from the Tigers. This is a huge one from Isaiah Thompson at the goal line. But the Wolfpack wouldn't leave without their offense making a play. Merrick Woods to Kobe Sandifer. They tie it up then took the lead in overtime. But on fourth down with the game on the line, Fridley walked it off. A touchdown and the extra point. A defensive battle, the Tigers win it, 15-14. A lot of emotion, kind of excited. First time getting the game, win a touchdown. But you know, you gotta love my team. It was a team, team game. Oh, defense played amazing. I mean, that guy is hard to contain and they were tackling him and getting him. We have good team speed on defense, so keep up with that guy. You know what they say? Defense win championships, so we love to rely on our defense, and they showed up today. Hopefully next week our offense can show up. A mix of emotions tonight, as you might expect. North lost their star quarterback to Sean Hill in February when the 15-year-old was murdered. It rocked the Polar community, really all of us. A few weeks ago, Polar's head coach Charles Adams told me how they would honor Deshaun tonight on their first offensive play. We're going to go out there that first game, and we're going to line up with with 10 people and we're going to take that penalty and uh, he's going to take that first snap for us. 
And so that's what they did tonight. Deshaun Hill, obviously, uh, the quarterback of the future at North. They line up with 10, no quarterback. They take the penalty to start the game. Then Kashad Gilmer would enter the game for the Polars to play the quarterback position. And on the first drive, as you see the honors to Deshaun Hill tonight, he leads him down the field. William Smith finishes the drive with a touchdown. With the conversion, they're up 8 to nothing. St. Paul Johnson punting on the next possession. Avon Sager blocks the punt. It's caught in midair and a touchdown. Wow. That's great. Armani Miller scores to make it 16-0. Then watch this pass. Kashani Gilmer, he'll drop back, looking for Jalen Baker, and watch this connection. Wow. <laughs> nice. Way to keep your eye on the ball. From Gilmer to Jalen Baker, great touchdown catch. The Polars win big. 48-6 the final tonight. Fake punt, direct snap. And it's a touchdown. Declan Doss goes 50 yards for the score. Miller's lead, Central 7-0. Allen Lankford, the quarterback for Central, watch the fake, and then he'll take it up the middle, and he's gone. 65 yards for the touchdown. It tied the game at 7, and Central goes on this scoring streak here. Watch the fumble recovery. I'm sorry, this is a run by Tyjon Cox-Curtis for 42 yards and a touchdown after a fumble recovery. And then they block a punt, and guess who recovers? Cox Curtis scoops it up, takes it in. It's all Minutemen tonight, 41-15 final. North to face New Prague, a team showing promise. That was 7-3 last year. The Trojans defense came flying out of the box. Century on third and long, tried to go the air. There's Ooh. the hit, Ooh. there's the fumble, and there's Ooh. Aiden Jackson with the scoop. Scoops it up, loose ball, goes in for the score. What a play on defense. Still in the first quarter, New Prague kept up the pressure. Watch the great hit, Rick great hit here. Wow. Ooh. Nick Geese and helmet down. That told the story of the night. New Prague won, but Century made them work for it. It was close, 23-21. Again, a perfect night for football this time in Northfield, where the Raiders are also expecting a promising season. Up 21-7 at the start of the second half. Why not try for an onside kick? That caught everyone off guard as Northfield recovered. On the very next play, there's the kicker slash quarterback, Camden Kaiser. He's going long right to Austin Cap. Beautiful catch. That sets up another score. Northfield beats Austin 35 to 7. South and Columbia Heights, not a perfect game for Columbia Heights on offense. Turned the ball over too much after taking the lead against Minneapolis South, and those turnovers would prove costly. South would rally to win the football game tonight. Final score was 12 to 6. Nice move there, but South rounded out. They scored two touchdowns on the night. Both came from the legs of Rasion Wade. He took the first one off a of fake and was gone coming right at you. Later, he hit with what turned out to be the game winner, finding enough space when he goes left to the end zone. South wins it 12-7 over Columbia Heights. We've got some highlights for you, and Tate Link takes it in for the touchdown. Princeton in white, or I'm sorry, Dassel in white. And then Princeton scoring a touchdown here. Cooper Drews, 10-yard scoring run, makes it 13-7. This game goes back and forth all night long, but Princeton, touchdown pass here, ends up winning the football game. Final score, 34-27. Massive matchup in Owatonna. Huskies hosting the Spartans. Owatonna looking for some payback for last year's section loss. Mayo, though, had different plans. Reese Grimson. Fires towards the pylon, finds Carter Holcomb for the touchdown. Spartans strike first on the road. They're up 7-0. Huskies, Huskies would answer that. QB Jacob Ginsky fires over the middle. That ball's tipped, but Johnny on the spot. Justin Gleason comes up with it, sheds a tackle. No one's stopping him all the way for the touchdown. Field goal was blocked, though, so it's 7-6 Mayo. All right, Mayo's turn. Grimson back to throw, slings one. It's picked off. That's Owen Byer with hands to grab it. The Huskies are in business. Their drive would stall, though. So Huskies out to punt. It's LeBron, not James, but Seastead with the block and recovery. Mayo now with great position, and they would capitalize. Seastead's dead. Too big, too strong at six more. Spartans with momentum up 14 to six in this one. And we're all said and done. It's Mayo coming away with the win on the road, 34 
27 is your final. Next, we head out to John Marshall, where the Rockets hosted the defending Class 5A state champion, Mankato West Scarlets. The Scarlets were ready to go from the opening kickoff. Watch Elijah Bowman get to the outside. He's going to get this one across the 50 to get things rolling for the West, uh, Scarlets. Later in the drive, quarterback Bart McAninch goes deep. Ethan Johnston goes up. Somehow comes down with the ball in double coverage. Later in the drive, the Scarlets find the end zone. McAninch takes it all the way himself. West up 7-0. Next possession for the Scarlets, they would turn to the ground game. Bullman takes this one up the middle. Nice gain. Later, McAninch, QB1, calls his own number. West goes to the ground and pound, keeps the chains moving. A few plays later, they find the end zone. Elijah Green's going to beat his man to the pylon, though. Watch the official. Whoop! <laughs> Try to steal some thunder there on the highlight. But in the end, man, Cato West wins that one 23 to nothing. That game called to half. There was a lightning show going on in downtown Rochester. Next, we head out to Byron Bears hosting Cass and Manorville in this rivalry matchup. We're going to join in here third quarter. Bears up 14-3. Looking for more. Hand off straight to Adam Glenn. Finds a hole. Makes a quick cut back towards the sideline. Watch him fly by me. That's all the way for the tutty. Byron pushing the lead here. They're up 21-3. to three. The Comets will look for an answer on this drive. This ball looks like it's loose on the handoff. Bunch of bears in the dirt. And it is Byron who's coming away with it. A big turnover for the bears. That puts Byron in the red zone now. Fourth down. QB Kale Robinson. High snap. Runs right. Doesn't have enough for the touchdown. That is a first down. And I said his name earlier in the highlight. Just give it to Adam Glenn. That would set him up on the goal line. It's Glenn in the end zone. Touchdown, Byron. Bears rolling up 28-3 to after the extra point. This game in a delay. The light show was going on as I was there. Byron up 28-3. to Chaska goes to work early. Jamarius Courtney to Carson Atterbury. 39-yard scoring strike. And they're up 14 to nothing. They have a lineman named Leo Smalley, number 74. We were focused in on him as he's blocking and he sets loose the running back, Reese Turner. 72 yards on the TD run. Chaska wins big tonight. Final 35-7. In part because running back Gavin Nelson had a good night. He gets past the line. He gets into the secondary. And you know what? That was enough. Quick six. Simley went on to win it 22-0. Lewis Park tonight, Simley in white. Nice pass play here. David Gogan on the screen play here. That, however, did not lead to any points. This game had a 20-0 lead in the first half, and then Simley's defense just bottled up St. Louis Park all night long. Jake Stanton coming up with a couple of big plays. Final score was 20-0. Simley opens the year with a win. Two Rivers and Tartan. Big interception on the long pass. Logan Fla. Intended for uh, Adam Suchi, it's picked off. Two Rivers gets in the end zone with a Nate Schaefer to Ramsey Rizlov touchdown pass. They made it 10-8, but Tartan's defense would hold on and win this football game for them tonight. Final score was 10-8. At home for the first time, taking on Andover, who went undefeated in the regular season and made it to the Class 5A state quarterfinals last year. Starting things off in the first, Brainerd backed up in their own territory. Marcello Getty ends up getting sacked for a safety and over up to zip. After the safety, the Huskies began driving, but Landon Nelson's play action pass picked off by John Hagen. Nice play to get the INT. Second quarter now, Brainerd held its own up to this point, but the Huskies took over in the second. Nelson screen pass to Teddy Heller. He shrugs off a defender and kicks on the afterburners. Andover extends their lead to 29-0 after that score. Just over three minutes to go in the half, the Huskies showing off some more of their aerial attack. Nelson drops back, looks down the seam, and finds his tight end, Hudson Maynard, who's going to run for a long, long time. No one catching him. Brainerd drops to 0-2 on the season. Andover wins big. Henry at Roosevelt this afternoon, first play from scrimmage. Newman Thomas is gone. Fast. And it was just starting for this young man and for the Patriots, 77 yards. For that touchdown, he had a good day. So did Henry. He would score from short distance. In fact, he would score four touchdowns in a 54-0 Henry route over Roosevelt to open it. Let's go back to the highlights. Watertown Mayor fumble football here. Defensive tackle Jason Bensky recovering the fumble for Watertown. 
They also have a standout defensive player and Ian Baru. Big play right there. Nice tackle. We move to the second quarter. Albert Rundell connects with Landon Meyer. Five yard touchdown pass off the rollout. Watertown Mayor wins their opener over Foley. 28 0 was the final. And Ricori, big win over Delano tonight, 35 7. On a solo strikes first, sophomore quarterback Luke Emmerich on the quarterback keeper. This is going to cover 62 yards down the sidelines. And it puts Monticello in front, 6 to nothing. Buffalo would come back. Grady Gouda over the middle to Gage Olson for the touchdown to make it 7-6. Buffalo would extend their lead when Gouda would find Ty Kosick and a nice catch in the end zone. Buffalo holds on to win. 22-20 was the final. And Mayer got the best of them. Levi Hahn to Blake Ulrich. Touchdown strike. That made the score 26-6. Jack Grimsley is number 33. Watch this run. Takes it off tackle. Nice cut there. Nice breakaway there. Nice move there. Wow, that's a big time run. 50 yards on that game, and it led to uh, a score. Then a little bit later, Garrett Schmidt on the punt return for Gibbon Fairfax right here. But Mayer will hold them down and win the game. Mayor Lutheran winning tonight to open the season as the defending champions 32-6. In the Chosen Valley, the reigning 2A state champs Chatfield hosting the Lord Eagles. Gophers, first possession, Sam Backer dropping back, lost this over the middle, too much air. Eli Haight intercepts this and the Eagles are in business. They get all the way to the goal line on their drive. It's Adam Seller here on the QB sneak. He is in. Touchdown, Eagles. Lord strikes first against the champ, 7 0. The Gophers have the ultimate answer. Backer this time taking it himself, bulldozes through a few Eagles, and is taking this to the crib. We are tied in the Chosen Valley. Backer can't be stopped. Jatfield would take over again after a fumble, and again, it's Backer. This time up the sideline. Not many in this state can stop this man. That's another Gopher score. They went for two and got it. It's 14 to 7. The dust settled there. That one had a delay as well. Chatfield was up 35-14 against Lord. Cloquet with the home opener against Proctor. Second quarter, Reese Sheldon feeds it to Colin Bonneville, and he'll truck his way through traffic and into the end zone. Lumberjacks lead 28 to nothing. Proctor now trying to get on the board. Carter St. Germain is chased out of bounds, and that's going to bring up fourth and nine. St. Germain looking downfield for Blake Emhoff, but good coverage by the Jacks defense. Now it's time to watch the offense go to work. Sheldon with a lateral pass over to Dane Painovich, and that sets them up perfectly for what you're about to see next. Sheldon takes a shot deep to Bonneville, who's wide open, a 39-yard touchdown pass, and the Lumberjacks chop down the rails 57 to 0. Esco taking on Denfeld. First quarter, Ty Christensen with a fake there. He faked me out too. And McCoy Parrish <laughs> fools the defense and stays on his feet into the end zone to take the 14 0 lead. Second quarter, now Hunters have a chance. Wyatt Hinderman finds Tay Manns for a nice grab there for the first down. First and goal now for Denfeld. Henderman looking for the touchdown, but instead finds the hands of Christensen, who comes up with the interception, interception for the Eskimos. Four minutes left before the half. Christensen to Nolan Witt. He goes right up the gut to add to the Eskos' lead. Denfeld on the punt. It's a little short. Parrish picks it up on the hop, and he takes off. He might just go all the way, and he certainly does. He trots into the end zone. And the Eskimos didn't stop there. They shut out the Hunters 53-0.